There are about 800,000 registered sex offenders in the United States. Their victims carry that trauma for life. But is there a solution to stop it before it happens? Tonight, we want to focus on those sex offenders and the search for solutions. We take you to a place in the center of St. Pete, dubbed Pervert Park, a trailer park that only houses convicted sex offenders. Exposed her to some things that she should not have been exposed to. Bill Fury is a registered Pinellas County sex offender. His crime, sexually abusing his girlfriend's 13-year-old daughter 25 years ago. I had this fetish, obsession, compulsion, whatever you want to call it, with women's underwear. And I was wrapped up in that one night when my girlfriend's daughter came into the room. Fury says he was touching himself when she walked in, and he didn't stop. After serving time in prison for his crime, he moved here to the Palace Mobile Home Park in St. Pete, first sharing his story publicly in a documentary called Pervert Park. He says he was molested as a child by several people, parents, and babysitters. But he says that's no excuse for what he did. Bill now runs this park that's home to about 120 registered sex offenders, convicted rapists, child sex abusers, and child pornography addicts. It absolutely works because it, it keeps us concentrated. It keeps all the sex offenders in one area so they're easier to watch for law enforcement, for probation. But more importantly, sex offenders can police each other. We know how we think. We know what warning signs to look for. We know what triggers are. And we can keep an eye on each other. Where does this inclination come from? Is it nature or is it nurture? Uh, excellent question. Uh, for a long, long time, for most of the 20th century, uh, the default idea was that uh, people learned it, that something over life, uh, being abused by, uh, by someone would turn somebody into a pedophile. Uh, but in the past 20 uh, years, my team and other teams throughout the world have done series of brain scans and we've examined other clues and really, the evidence is pointing very, very solidly to this is a brain thing. Dr. James Cantor is a clinical psychologist who has spent decades studying pedophilia and the neuroscience of sex, speaking with more than 1,000 people who have a sexual attraction towards children, many, he says, who have not acted on it. The greatest hope really is on the prevention side. If we got to this person the day before they committed that offense, not only would that person be better off, we'd be one victim less. That person wouldn't be a victim in the first place. While he agrees with mandatory reporting laws, Dr. Cantor says overreach is a problem. The fine print of the mandatory reporting laws is that we don't report, and as a licensed clinician myself, we're not required to report somebody who's attracted to children. We're required to report when we think there's a child in danger. If somebody comes in and he starts telling us about a child that he has a crush on and we uh, uh, don't think that he has a, a good self-control skills, there we have a duty to protect the child. That's the idea. Unfortunately, because of the social pressure and political pressure, people overreact and will report cases where there's no reason to report. Which is why in other parts of the world, doctors are trying to get people to seek help before committing a crime. Like this public service announcement in Germany, part of the Dunkelfeld project. Dunkelfeld means dark field in German. Dr. Cantor believes these resources can prevent someone from acting on an urge. When somebody comes in and asks for help, wants management skills, wants sex drive reducing medication, we would be crazy not to give it to him. As for Bill Fury, after appearing in that documentary nearly 10 years ago about this so-called village of the damned, he says he continues telling his story because he hopes it'll stop the next tragedy. I want to fix it. You want, I have kids, I have grandkids, you know, and I don't want them to have to deal with this. The Palace Mobile Home Park does not allow children to live there. In the state of Florida, sex offenders may not live within 1,000 feet of any park, playground, school, or daycare. They also cannot work at any business where children are regularly present, which includes schools, daycare facilities, playgrounds, indoor and outdoor play areas, and other similar places.